Aloha and welcome back to video number 10. Today we're going to talk about the core. Now, for the past 10 years or more, we've been talk you've been hearing a lot of words that says core, core, core in the gym, in the commercials, um, in newspaper articles and magazine articles. But what is a core? Most people don't really know this thing. Yeah, it's a six pack, it's an abdominal muscle, but it's way more complicated than that. And today I hopefully could simplify that for you and help you connect with your core. So let's break it down in the most simple form. Think of the core as a cylinder, okay? We have the top, the middle, and the bottom. Now, the top of the core is the diaphragm. That we talked about in the first video about learning to breathe through the diaphragm okay so that's the top of the core the bottom of the core is the pelvis the pelvic floor that we talked about on the video on the pelvis i think it was the fifth video and the pelvic floor is the bottom of the cylinder and it's all the muscle down here that controls your bowel your urine your reproductive area then the third area of the core is the middle, the cylinder. Okay. And this is like a corset that squeezes and contracts and tightens and makes your waist look tiny and give you a sense of flat tummy. That is the deeper layer of the mid part of the core. So repeat, three parts of the core. The top of the can, the cylinder, is the diaphragm. The middle is the corset. And the third is the pelvic floor. Now, we talked about in video number one about learning how to breathe to the diaphragm. Number two, we're gonna learn about today is the deeper layer of the core, which there's four layers. We have the superficial layer, it's a six pack we see. That job is to flex the spine. Then you peel that layer off, you have your inter external oblique and internal oblique, and their job is to go side bend and rotate and side diagonal. Their job is to do those movements. And then your deeper layer is that transverse abdominus, that corset that pulls everything in so that your external oblique and internal oblique and rectus abdominis, all those superficial ones on the, on the top, pulls in. How do you know if you connected to the inner core, that transverse abdominis? It's the cough test. So if you just relax, if I cough, it should go in. You should feel that deeper transverse abdominal muscle pulling in and everything else follows, like one unit. That's the engine. It gives you a sense of flat tummy. Then we have that pelvic floor on the bottom of the cylinder. These muscles, if you contract it, it gives you a sense of long spine. You pull everything up. Now those muscles are challenging, I can't show you. But you hear a lot of women hear about Kegel exercises where you know you, the um, body start to um, get very, the lower body gets so weak that after, especially after pregnancy, or very inactive lifestyle, um, people start to leak. They when they pee, when they jump, when they laugh too too hard, they leak um, some urine. So then over time, people need to wear diapers, or they need to have surgery, like the pelvic sling surgery, to help support that and, uh, and uh, prevent those embarrassing moments. But you can avoid all that by engaging the pelvic floor and the transverse abdominis and breathe to the rib cage. So when your core is truly engaged, you have a sense of flat tummy, long spine, and strong center. Going back, the three things, breathing to your rib cage, pulling in that belly button into the spine, the cough test, <laughs> pulling up that pelvic floor and still breathe to the rib cage. Because if you're breathing to your belly, you're going to end up relaxing your core and re-engage your core. So a shortcut I like to tell my client is to zip it in. Imagine you have a zipper from your pubic bone up. Zip it, zip it up, but breathe to the diaphragm. 
or you can put one hand on your belly, one hand on your rib cage. Feel that hand by the rib cage moving and not your belly. And the more you sit up tall, naturally we have to breathe to the diaphragm. So this is where the posture is so important. To always sit up in good posture, then you naturally breathe to the diaphragm. Majority of the time. But some client, we need to break it down because we have lost that connection and we just those clients need a little bit more coaching uh, awareness where I, I become the third eye and give them feedback so today now I'm gonna have you do an exercise to connect that so the beginner level will be just sitting here and connecting if you need to look in the mirror if you need to feel it is to let it go and then zip it in and up and then hold that two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and you want to count because that's when you know you're breathing you're not just sucking it in okay you want to zip it in keep it zipped and you should be able to maintain that and still take, breathe to the diaphragm but if you do if you breathe to your belly then you end up relaxing the core and re-engage your core but when we're exercising we're not sitting all the time so this is the difficult part and that's why you we like to do show you i want to show you the quadruped uh, position where my hands below my shoulder and my knees below my hip and you can do this in front of a mirror and you've seen that where we exercises where we go into the cat and the dog and then the middle okay now in order to move that way with good full range of motion we need to engage that core and zip it in so if I dump it out right now and try to do cat that's all the range of motion I can go into. And then dog, oh, that's all. You see how restricted that is? And my shoulders start to come up because my body knows that my spine is not stable. And so it won't allow me to go into the full range of motion. It's just trying to protect me. It's, it senses a um, threat, okay? Because it, feels, it knows that it's not stable. So what I'm gonna do is let my stomach dump. I'm gonna engage my core, zipping it in, not sucking it in because I'm still breathing. My shoulders down, okay, I'm still zipping. And look at this, I'm dumping, and then I'm zipping. And now I can really go into the cat, really go into the dog, and then find the middle, okay. So if you're getting tired, dump it out again, look in the mirror, pull that zipper in, Slide the shoulder blade down. Go into a cat. Go into a dog. Find the middle, neutral spine. Keep zipping in. And hold that. And this might be a lot of work for most people. But when this gets easy, that's when you can go into those exercises you see all the time for to strengthen your back and, and shoulder stabilizers or even core. You see, and most, some people, some of you might have even tried it in physical therapy, is that opposite arm and leg. And you've seen this before. But notice I didn't change my alignment or my core. My core is maintained. But most people, when they do this, and it, you, I see this in class all the time, is that they're dumping the stomach out and they're just going to here, creating a lot of stress in the lower back and dumping the stomach out, creating a lot of stress on the wrist. So I want you to think about engage. Zipping in and find you so you can find your alignment automatically. When I zip it in, I go right into alignment. And that's when I can go into the opposite arm and leg and do all these more advanced movements and make that movement productive and not just going through the motion. That even if you just do three good ones with with proper alignment and mindful movement, you, your body will feel a sense of accomplishment and it will get stronger. But if you're just going through the motion, it just senses threat and it's just gonna go get tighter and go into the protective mode and learn a poor pattern of movement. So I hope this is helpful to you. If it is, please replay it, practice, share with your families and friends. And if you have any questions, feel free to Email lisi at journeytofitness.com. Aloha.